Ladies and gentlemen, after witnessing an explosive TKO round one stoppage here at Legacy Boxing Series, we continue the action with bout number five. Bout number five in the Legacy Boxing Series is sanctioned for six three-minute rounds in a men's lightweight 135 pounds boxing division matchup. Your referee in charge of the action in the ring representing Switzerland is referee Eco Bay Bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, this is bout number five in your Legacy Boxing Series. Bout number five is sanctioned for six three-minute rounds in a men's lightweight 135 pounds boxing division matchup. Please help me welcome first into the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, is Biana Mazzola. <laughs> Representing Cuba, it's Frank Zaldivar. series. Bout number five is sanctioned for six three-minute rounds in a men's lightweight 135 pounds boxing division matchup. Your man in the ring representing Switzerland is referee Eco Bay Bitch. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me reintroduce first, fighting out of the blue corner, he stands 174 centimeters, coming in at 5'7", five, 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 weighing in officially at 57 kgs, 126 pounds. He enters the ring tonight with a pro record of 16 wins, with five of those big wins coming in by way of knockout, and only eight losses on record. Fighting out of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, is Bayana Mazzola. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, tonight he ends the ring wearing the white trunks with gold trim, standing at a height of 165 centimeters, 5 foot 4, weighing it officially at 60.5 kgs, 133 pounds. He enters the ring with a pro record, a perfect pro record of two wins and no losses. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, luchando fuera, Alvara, Santiago de Cuba, el perro, Frank Zaldivar. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our fighters are ready. Referee Iko Bebic will now be giving his final instructions to the boxers. Okay, come on. Guys, I want a clean fight. I have only three commands. Stop, break, and box. If I say stop, stop fighting. If I say break, step back, both of you. Check gloves and good luck. So they schedule for six. Saldivar is 2-0 and so far. Books in November 2019 in Costa Rica, then in April 2021 in Hamburg, where he now resides. When you see a Cuban fighter turn pro, you know there's a story because they have to leave their homeland. And Germany has been a relatively popular destination at times. Johan Pablo Hernandez, boxed out of Halle. I think he jumped over the fence of the Chemistry, chemistry Cup as an amateur. Because that's where that's that's held stayed there, boxed out of boxed out of there. I just have done it even in the amateur code. He has yeah. boxes yeah, go on, go on. an amateur yeah. front. Thank Alfonso you. got a gold at the World Championships last October. He's boxing for Azerbaijan. Emmanuel Reyes for Spain. All the same kind of case as Zaldivar. Couldn't become number one. Which is what I said is just such a difficult thing to do, but you've still got an awful lot to offer. Zaldivar just climbed into a left hook to start with there against a rangy looking Mazzola. Oh, look at that. Already from Zaldivar. The, the, the vision there to make. Maybe the other fellow is with so much ease, Mazzola. Oh, that's good work, though. Left hand just catches him as he opens out there, Mazzola. He, he's come to throw a few here, and he is leaving himself a little bit open. <laughs> Mike Perez did exactly the same thing to, to turn for over. We'll see in the main event later on, ending up in Ireland after he made his way out to. Very good. There, just catches Mazzola standing quite tall. And the right hook over the top as well, isn't it? So low, doesn't he, Zalvar? That's why he's short the fight, but he gets really low, makes it hard to hit him clean. Yeah. So the catch is a left hook there again. He's so always opening to throw his own left. He's not scared to throw, that's for sure. Yeah, but he's not, he's not looking. No, he's, he's some of the similar shots at all, but half getting through the target but he's not looking he's not aiming any shots he's just swinging the punches in big right hand there from Zaldivar and he's put back onto his heels and then eventually his backside there Mazzola went down the installments kind of but you can see it land just above us away to the right hand side I don't know how shaken he is by that he's not given any to it. He was called square. He was called square on, which made it more difficult. But it was a great shot. It really was again. It came from a very low centre of gravity. He just threw that right hand over the top there. Salvador looks very, very cut off. Time, time. Oh, There's a bit of tape trailing from the wrist of the left glove there, which is why the referee called a halt to things. It's not enough to stop the action when Zalbadal is massively on top there, by the way. Stands gets really low, sits on that, engages the, the legs as he bends the knees and then just fires it with that solid shot. How comfortable he is in, in firing range, blocking everything. Box. Two light flyweights and 
interesting heavyweight fight with Lenroy Thomas and Smokichi and then Perez top of the bill against Dutar, which could be a real tear up to be honest with you. There's there's some real quality on this card. Again the Zalva there just walking walking Mazzola down there, hands high, blocking him to the elbows and the, and the gloves and then just dipping low, coming back with quality work. Didn't give too much away when he was knocked down in terms of how it affected him. He was pretty stony faced. He looked okay as he got back to his feet. But Saldivar has definitely got a couple more gears here at least. He hasn't got up first gear, does he? Literally, has he? He hasn't, you know. He's been so relaxed with his approach. Round number two. Hand in a little combination there from Mazola. They don't want to say it, do they? they don't want to say it. They want someone else to do it for them. He was out of his depth, massively out of his depth. He was, he was gutsy. He was throwing under, under pressure. But look how comfortable Zalva there was. He was just you know, sat in there, got nice and low, just sat in the pocket, and was just happy to let punches go at him, fly over his head. He was comfortable blocking. He took a few now and again, but there was nothing that, that ever worried him. And the first that, that knockdown, you know, when he caught him, he, he caught was all a square on in, in, the, in the first round. Didn't really, I didn't just seriously hurt. It was a great little time shot, but the onslaught at the end of at the end of the you know, when the referee stepped in was was probably more con conclusive really, and, and a great reason for the referee to say that's enough. Because every time he got hit, he got hurt, and the it was just before that, a combination two before that, there was two really heavy body shots, left hooks to the body, and they weren't whipping shots that take your breath away. They were thudding shots that break ribs. And yeah, after that, I think he thought I don't really fancy this, and the referee did as you. So nicely put it, read the room very well, didn't he? And there, yeah, called the halt. But Zalvadan looks good. He does, he looks he really looks good. good. The, the lefts to the body were horrendous. I mean, we were really close to them and you could see they were bad and, and he was giving ground to them. It was a surgical strike that because he just took what his opponent had. Most of it did land and, and then he just took him apart, quite honestly. And again, I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing him again. 25 years old, there's a lot more to come. and. They really need to kickstart things and get him in the ring as often as they can now in, in 2022 because he turned pro in late 2019 and that was just his third fight. We all know the reasons why, but they've got to crack on with it. Let's get the announcement from Rishi. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number five comes to a close with your referee calling a stop to the action at one minute and 50 seconds in round number two. Declare your winner by T.K.O. to El Perro, Frank Zan.
Perro, Frank Zaldivar, who just took home a win. In round number two, taking home a referee stoppage at one minute and 50 seconds. El Perro, by the way, that is by, by far one of my favorite nicknames I've ever had to announce, just on a very personal note. But how does it feel, man? You took a round two stoppage over here. Were you worried about your opponent coming into this fight? What were your thoughts going on before the event? Me siento bastante bien. Como me preguntaste ayer en la conferencia de prensa que si no sentía nervios porque iba a enfrentar a un peleador que tenía 17 peleas ganadas y te contesté que no. Así mismo te dije. I feel very good. Like you asked me in the press conference, uh, what I feeling for this fight because you have very experience, but I show you it's nothing for me. That is very true. In fact, earlier on during the press conference, I had asked him this because I personally had a bit of a doubt with the man only coming in with two fights in his professional career and the other opponent having 16 if El Perro was worried. But he said no, he wasn't. And tonight, he has showed it up over here. Any final words for your friends and family watching you back home in Cuba? Yo quiero decirle a toda la gente en Cuba, a toda la gente que me ven en el mundo entero, muchas gracias, agradecido con mi público. Quiero mandarle un saludo a Willy, quiero mandarle un saludo a mi familia, a mi esposa y dedicarle esta victoria a mi hija que tiene 20 días de nacido. Y también quiero agradecerle al Team Legacy, al Prince Achi Adala. I'd like to say thank you for all the people who support me, uh, Team Legacy, uh, Shaikh Abdallah, and everybody in Cuba to look at my fight. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, El Perro Frank Zaldivar. Draped in the Cuban flag, Frank Zaldivar, and activity is the key, isn't it? He needs to box as much as he can now, really. Yeah, he does. And also, because of his pedigree, and you just see, see the ability and the confidence he has in his work already, he needs to be stepped up quickly. No, not too, not too crazily, but I mean, you step him up every single fight. He doesn't, there's no warmer fights for this kid now. He's so talented, but he looks so good today. He's so composed. Now against a guy who looked to fire back, but he took that out of him. He took that, he took that ambition out of him straight away. You know, with with a right hand that dropped him, and then they finished the round there and had him in the corner, hurt him with body shots, the right hands over the top, and he literally just was the boss from start to finish. Typical Cuban arrogance of a fantastic.